Weston, obviously I've already introduced myself. Um, it's my privilege to be speaking to you about the Holy Spirit. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun today, um, so don't be nervous or anything like that. I'm just going to launch straight into it. I'm supposed to have 50 minutes, um, <coughs> and there's no timetable, so I'm just going to go for it. Still within 50 minutes, though. Um, so, yeah, so we, what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be doing a, a study into the doctrine of pneumatology. What pneumatology is, is simply the fancy word for the things of the Holy Spirit, the study of the things of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to very much start where the Bible starts in this, okay? So in the first book of the Bible, in the first chapter of the first book of the Bible, in the first verse of the first chapter in the first book of the Bible, it goes something like this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, and the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the waters. So right from the very beginning, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, was involved in creation and preparing what was nothing into being made into what we know and love, the earth and the universe. My second preliminary point is this, that the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. The Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. To be sure, it was human beings that penned Bible, but the Bible itself says <laughs> that the writers were carried along by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we believe that this book is the authentic, inspired, perfect word of God that the Holy Spirit wrote and loves. My third preliminary point is this, that Jesus Christ, Son of God, lived his life completely in the power of the Holy Spirit. That is massive. That is a massive point. Now, when I say that Jesus Christ lived, lived his life in the power of the Holy Spirit, you might think that he did his miracles and his healings, casting out demons, all these kind of things, turning water into wine by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that would be true. But what Jesus also did is he did his less, the less glamorous stuff in the power of the Holy Spirit, things like loving, loving his neighbor, loving his enemies, serving. Jesus did everything that he did in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in this way, he's our example. He's not our example in the sense that no one of us can go to the cross and die for the sins of the whole world. But in this way, he, 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 he's, he became flesh, was filled with the Holy Spirit, what Alan was talking about earlier, so that we, who have the Holy Spirit available to us, might go forth and do the works that he did. Jesus himself said, those that follow me, will do the works that I've been doing and greater works they will do because I'm going to the Father. Those are my three introductory points, really important. So who's the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? What's he like? First of all, I'll, I'll just start off by saying this. Alan's done a great job already, but the Holy Spirit really is no one to be scared of. He's not to be feared. He's not to be, he's not to be made nervous. The reason I say that is because I just feel that there may be one or two people here that have struggled with some of the things that they might have seen <coughs> in the name of the Holy Spirit, some of the things that they might have seen online, YouTube for example, some of the things they might have seen in other churches, families' churches, previous churches, and it's made you kind of nervous, some of the things done in the name of the Holy Spirit. But I will say to you today, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The Holy Spirit is the best friend you'll ever have, as Alan has already said. And Jesus, Jesus calls him a gift. Jesus says that. So if Jesus says he's a good gift, we to believe him. So I'll just pray quickly for all of you. So Heavenly Father, I just pray for my friends here. <coughs> Lord, I just pray you just be, by your spirit, erasing nerves. Lord, those that are, have struggled, battled in the mind, perhaps... Lord, uh, people have, have struggled kind of hearing things and thinking things. I shouldn't go today. It's going to be a waste of time. Oh, there's no point in going. I'm not going to learn anything. It's going to be weird. Lord, I just pray, Lord, you will just erase and just blow away in the name of Jesus those, those nerves. And Lord, Holy Spirit, would you just come and descend? We need you now. I need you to teach. Lord, would you come and descend on, our, on my friends and just give us peace in the name of Jesus? Amen. 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 So just to test this, 
I want everybody to stand up and shake out all the nerves. Like this, like this, like this. Shake them all out. I want to see. Lady in the red, you're not shaking enough. I'm not sure about that. Shake a big man here. I need to see you shaking. Come on. All right, shake all out. Now I want you to say to the person next to you, the Holy Spirit is a good gift. What do you say? That? Good gift. She's going for it! Hallelujah! <laughs> you guys can sit down, thanks very much for that. I saw some Beyonce quality shakes just then as well, so very, very happy. So I'm going to launch into this. So, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the third member of the Trinity. There's Father, there's Son, and there's the Holy Spirit. The Father is the first member of the Trinity. He's very much the leader. The Son submits to the Father, and the Spirit submits to the Father and to the Son. The Holy Spirit is also a person. He's a person. Just as you can get to know Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can also get to know the Holy Spirit. And just as you can get to know the Father, you can also get to know the Holy Spirit. He's a person. And just as you wouldn't say that call the Father it, or you wouldn't call Jesus it, you wouldn't call the Holy Spirit it, because he's a person. So you wouldn't say it, Jesus, it died on the cross for me. It just wouldn't sound right. It just, it's, not, it's not accurate. Now, never fear, if you have called the Holy Spirit it, it's not sin, it's not it, don't worry. It's just, just to be accurate, he's a, he's a person you can get to know. He's a good, good gift. And the Holy Spirit, can, he goes by various names, Various names. So sometimes he's referred to as the Holy Ghost uh, in circles. In the Bible, is often <coughs> referred to as the Spirit or the Spirit of God or the Spirit of Christ. Some people might refer to him as the Spirit of Jesus. We're talking about the same Spirit. The same Spirit. It's fine. There's one Spirit in all the earth. One Holy Spirit in all the earth. So there's not many Holy Spirits. There's one. There's one Holy Spirit. And often in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is represented, metaphorically if you like, as water, as springs, as fountains, as rivers. So when you see in the Bible, in the Old Testament or the New Testament, some referring to water, it may be that the spiritual principle behind that is referring to the Holy Spirit. And we'll be talking about that more in just a moment. The Holy Spirit, we believe, is God. He's God. He's equal to God and Jesus Christ in power and in might. But as I said, he just submits to the Father and to the Son. And every single person who is truly a Christian has the Holy Spirit living inside of them. Period. What we're going to be talking about a bit later is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the filling of the Holy Spirit, kind of like getting a big portion of the Holy Spirit and pouring it all over you, if, that can, if I can use that sort of language. But every Christian meta, uh, symbolically has the, more than symbolically, symbolically, really has the Holy Spirit living inside them. <coughs> and in a person, in a Christian, there are two spirits. Two spirits. So there's your spirit. Your spirit is what makes you you. Your spirit is what, what, what you see now, what I'm doing. That, that's the spirit of Toby that's doing these, uh. these movements, okay? <laughs> that's my spirit. <laughs> It's a crazy spirit. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but also, as well as your spirit inside you, you have the Holy Spirit. And the role of the Holy Spirit is very much to be working on your spirit over time through the process that we now call sanctification. We're working on your spirit, making you more and more like the, that of Jesus Christ. It's a process. And you have two spirits inside you. So what's the big idea? What's the point of all this? What, what is the point? What is the role of the Holy Spirit? This is massive. The role of the Holy Spirit is to glorify Jesus. That is the role of the Holy Spirit. That's what he does. That's what he does. He loves to glorify Jesus. What does it mean to glorify? It's one of these words that we hear often in Worship. church circles. Worship. What it means to glorify is essentially to show Jesus Christ as being awesome, as being worthy of all praise, 
as being the great treasure in all of the universe and beyond. To show him to be the king of kings, the lord of lords, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the leader of the church. To show Jesus to be who he really is. The Holy Spirit's not like a used car salesman that might come up to you and sell you a car and he says it's amazing but really it's quite naff. The Holy Spirit is, he reveals how awesome Jesus Christ really is. Why? It's a good question, why? See, the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible and in the Bible it says concerning Jesus that nothing was made that was made, that wasn't made through Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ has risen higher than the devil, demons, angels. His name is the name that is above all names. And he stands, or sits rather, at the right hand side of the majesty on high, God the Father. That Jesus Christ, everything in the world and beyond, the powers, the principalities, Everything is being made in subject to Jesus Christ, so much so that everything is going to be put under the feet of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ made the world. What is visible? What is invisible? That's Jesus Christ. It says in the Bible that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven, on earth, under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is God to the glory of God the Father. The Holy Spirit knows this. The Holy Spirit knows this. And the Holy Spirit loves it. He loves the glory of Jesus Christ. He loves the fact that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. Is the Lord of Lords. Is the Good Shepherd. Is the Saviour of the world. Is the Great High Priest. He's everything. The eye of heaven is on Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is not like us. It's not like... When we go to a job and you may not like your job and you're doing your job and it's kind of like, oh, I've got to do this job because I'm being paid, I need to pay the bills. The Holy Spirit loves his job and he's been doing his job forever and he'll continue to do his job into the ages. So essentially the Holy Spirit's work is to glorify Jesus. So if you know, hopefully you know what a spider diagram is, but if you imagine a spider diagram and in the middle of the spider you can write the Holy Spirit glorifying Jesus and get a kind of a circle around it, the spider, and out from that comes the ways in which the Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus. And that's what I'm going to run through now. So what are the ways that the Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus? He guides us. He guides us. One of the names for the Holy Spirit is the Counselor. The Counselor, he gives us counsel. He gives us counsel. He guides us. It says this in Isaiah. Um, chapter 30 verse 21 it says and your ears shall hear a word from behind you saying this is the way walk in it when you turn to the right or to the left that's kind of what the Holy Spirit does that's the kind of a picture of the work of the Holy Spirit he guides you and some of you in this room may have experienced that already some of you in this room may have kind of heard or felt the guiding uh, presence if you like of the Holy Spirit you may have thought it was your mind or your heart, or you may have said, it's my gut, something my guts is telling me. It may well have been the Holy Spirit. He guides us. St stand up if you need guidance. Stand up if in life you need guidance. I'm standing up. Oh, wow. Okay, now look around. Some people are standing up because everyone else is standing up. <laughs> but look around. Now look, uh, over there is a guy called Alan Preston, right? He's been an elder in CCK for a hundred years. He's been a Christian for 150 years. And, and he's standing up saying, even he, a senior leader in the church, needs guidance. We're all in the same boat, aren't we? Aren't we? Yeah. We're all in the same boat. Feel free to sit down. Well, ready, yeah. <laughs> Another work of the Holy Spirit is he bears witness. He bears witness. This is what it says in the Word. John 15, 26, it's top of page 3 in your notes if you're following the notes. But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, he will bear witness about me. He will bear witness about me. Have you ever been in a situation where you've been 
with colleagues or co-workers or people you work with or family or friends or on the bus and wherever really and you, you've heard someone kind of run down Jesus or, or, or kind of run down the church or or God have you ever been in that situation yeah. <laughs> one or two of you seem to have been and have you ever been in that situation something kind of inside you kind of rose up perhaps kind of a perhaps even a, a kind of a righteous anger a kind of frustration you just kind of want to say no 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 that that's not right that that's not true no 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 that's not my friend jesus he's, he's not like that or well, did you it may well have been that that was the holy spirit see because i reckon that the holy spirit is at work in your life perhaps more than you realize which should be a really comforting thought. See that the Holy Spirit will help you to bear witness about Jesus. So he just he won't just give you the the desire to want to speak. The Bible says he'll also give you the execution. He'll give you the execution. And it goes further than that. It doesn't just say in the Bible in the Bible that he'll give you the execution. The Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. Some of you will say this. I'm not very good at speaking to people about Jesus. I just don't have the words. And when I do speak, it's just I speak very quietly. My voice is all shaky. My hands are kind of quivering a bit. And sometimes I quote the wrong scriptures and I just say the wrong things. And when I do speak, I'm getting kind of a hundred questions back at me. Criticisms about why I shouldn't believe in Jesus Christ. Why it's completely wrong. But the good news, friends, is that actually the Holy Spirit will help you bear witness. So, it doesn't say the Holy Spirit will give you eloquence. It doesn't say that. It says it'll help you bear witness. So therefore, if you're the most eloquent person in the world and speaking to someone about Jesus, whoever it is, if the Holy Spirit's not there, <laughs> exactly that. But, but, if you say a few words and you fumble over those words and you think that you've quoted the wrong scripture or given the wrong citation, if the Holy Spirit's with you, which he will be, it's going to make an impact in that person's life. Friends, it's not the eloquence of the speaker. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. So you can feel like, do you know what, I'm not a great speaker, I'm not good at evangelizing, telling people about Jesus Christ. But actually it's not about the eloquence, it's about the power of God. And if you've got the Holy Spirit, which you will have, he will help you bear witness. It's kind of like Jesus on trial before the whole world. On trial before the whole world, he's in the dock. And Jesus is, is here, he's saying, right, he's made these claims before the judge who is whoever kind of you're speaking to. And he's calling witnesses. You, you, come and defend me, you, this is your time, Look, I call you up, come on, tell, tell the truth about me, are my claims true? And you're over here saying, yeah, they are true. That's how the Holy Spirit will help you bear witness, you're the witnesses of Jesus. He's in the, on trial if you like, he's not really if you know what I mean, but in this analogy he is. He'll help you bear witness. And the Holy Spirit will, essentially he'll, He'll help you. It's called the parakletos. In the Greek, it's called it's parakletos. It just means we translate that to paraclete. What that essentially means is the one called alongside of you. A helpful, an easier way of saying it is he helps us. And this is what Jesus says. He says, when the helper comes, when the helper comes, who is the Holy Spirit? So he helps you. And essentially he helps you glorify Jesus. Again, the purpose, the the, 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 the driving motivation of the Holy Spirit in all things is to glorify the living Lord Jesus Christ. And the way he help, glorifies Jesus Christ is by helping us to live a life that is pleasing to Jesus Christ, even in the flesh, by the Spirit, to glorify him back. And here are some of the ways he helps us. So, I'm going to have to rattle through these because it'll take forever to go through. But he guides us. I've already talked about that. He assures you of your salvation. He helps us resist temptation. He seals you and is a deposit. He helps you please Jesus. 
It gives us joy. It convicts us of sin, righteousness and judgment. It convicts us. It helps us pray. It helps us worship. He leads us into all truths. He gives us understanding of spiritual things. He teaches. He brings to mind scriptures. He gives us peace. He gives us life and vigor. He gives us spiritual refreshment. He gives us courage and boldness. He gives us a desire to obey Jesus. He strengthens us. He gives us increased freedom. He converts us. He doesn't get jealous. And he gives you power. That's a long job description. Why am I saying all this? There are some of you here who have struggled with Bible study. You found it difficult to understand the truths in the Bible and you found it boring to even pick up the Bible. There are some of you in here that have struggled with prayer. That you feel like nothing's getting done in prayer. You don't really feel like praying. There's some of you in here that have struggled with worship. That you go to church or group, and you see everyone raising their hands, jumping up and down, and you think, I just don't see it. There are some of you in here that have struggled with courage. And you feel, do you know what, I just chicken out every time I someone mentions Jesus, I have an opportunity and I just can't take it. I'm just not very courageous, I'm not very bold. There are some of you in here that have struggled for joy. Perhaps you have depression, or have depressive episodes. And as a result of these things, you've heard, you're no good. As a result of these things, you've heard, try harder. As a result of these things, you've heard, you're not a Christian. As a result of these things, you've heard, God doesn't love you. Well, I've got some good news for you. Those, those are nice. The Holy Spirit is here to help you. He's here to help you do the things that you can't do. He's here to help you. If you struggle with boldness, the Holy Spirit will come upon you to be bold. Bold, not bald. Bold, bold, bold. Help me, Lord. <laughs> Alan uh, uh, is full of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> My powerful point has been taken away from me now. <laughs> no. The Holy Spirit will come upon you to be bold. The Holy, if you struggle for prayer, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and help you to pray. If you struggle to read and understand the truths of this book, the Holy Spirit will bring them to life. If you struggle for joy... The Holy Spirit will come upon you and give you the joy of the Holy Spirit. If you struggle for worship, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and let you raise your hands and cry tears of joy. The Holy <laughs> Spirit is here to help you. I have good news, friends, that perhaps some of you have been trying to be a Christian in your own strength. You've been trying to be a Christian and trying to live out this Christian life and just finding it's too hard, it's too difficult. I don't understand how other people can go and live this life. I'm telling you the truth. The Holy Spirit is here to fill you and help you live a life glorious and satisfying to Jesus Christ and even yourself. That's good news. The Holy Spirit is here to help you. You don't need to try harder necessarily. You don't need to wake up early. You don't need to read the Bible. Read the Bible, come on. What's wrong with you? Read more Bible. Pray, come on, pray harder. You didn't try hard enough. You didn't try praying like this. Pray like this. Pray, say these words. <clears throat> you need the power and the presence and the passion and the peace and the pleasure of the Holy Spirit. He's here to help you. How else does the Holy Spirit glorify Jesus? Again, we're still going through the legs of the spider. The Holy Spirit causes unity. This is an important point. The Holy Spirit causes unity. Yes, he causes unity within the body of Christ, the church. Keep the unity of the Spirit, the bond of peace. Yes. 
But the unity I'm talking about is he's unified with the book that he wrote. The Holy Spirit loves the Bible because he wrote the Bible. The Holy Spirit will never, ever, 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 ever tell you to do something that is against this book. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Come on. Amen. Testify. Testify. The Holy Spirit will never let. Yeah, I like the vigor over there. Yeah. This, you guys got some catching up to do. This side's doing better than you. The Holy Spirit will never get you to do something contrary to the Bible. And the way we need to interpret every spiritual thing, every spiritual revelation, every spiritual. Uh, thing that we get from God essentially is through the Bible, by the Bible. Because there will be some people that claim to be, you know, love, people that love the Holy Spirit and just say, yeah, we love the Holy Spirit, man. Yeah, the Holy Spirit is great, man. And yeah, the Holy Spirit is great, man. <laughs> but then, if you, if you love the Holy Spirit and you put this under the bed or you put this away, actually, you dishonor the Holy Spirit. You dishonor the Holy Spirit if you don't love the word as well. So in this church, we're both out. We absolutely, positively love the Holy Spirit, the manifestations of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. We love the Holy Spirit. We also love the word. <coughs> Why do I say this? Here's a warning for you. It says in 1 John 4, verses 1 to 3, it says that we should test the spirits. This is what it says. Beloved, do not believe. Do not believe every spirit. This isn't in your notes, by the way, this specific scripture, but it's in the Bible. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you will know the spirit. By this you will know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Every spirit that confesses Jesus has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God, but is from the Antichrist, who is the devil. There's one Holy Spirit in all the earth. He is good. He is truth telling. He is pure. He is satisfying. And there are many demonic spirits in the world. And so what we need to do, as I said, is we interpret everything by the Bible because it's not every fountain that is pure. If I were to get water from my toilet, it would make me sick. And what the Holy Spirit will do is he will never enslave, he will never ensnare, he will just bring you increased freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is... Jesus. Nearly, nearly there, nearly there. Freedom, freedom. But, but where? <laughs> but where the spirit of the Lord is, there is also Jesus, obviously. Yeah, that's the right answer. But the, what I was thinking of was freedom. Freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So I want to just check, because there are many people on the earth that will call themselves spiritual, and to be truthful, they are very spiritual. But what kind of spirits are we talking about here? The Holy Spirit loves Jesus. He loves when Jesus is worshipped. He loves when Jesus is glorified. He loves when Jesus is lifted up in praise, and he's preached accurately and faithfully. That is what the Holy Spirit absolutely, positively loves. Where Jesus is being lifted up, where his word, the Bible, is being preached accurately and faithfully, he's there, he shows up, his presence is felt. But where he's not... And something else is being worshipped. Someone else is being lifted up. Even our own selves. Actually, we cannot, cannot, cannot be sure. It's the Holy Spirit. We need to test the spirits. And every spirit that says Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is the Spirit of God, who we're talking about today, who loves us. The Holy Spirit will help you be sanctified as well. Again, I mentioned this earlier, but the Holy Spirit will help you become more and more like Jesus Christ. It's a process, the process of sanctification. It means just growing in God, 
Here are the fruit of the Spirit. So he, he, you grow in God and the Holy Spirit has certain fruit. We call them the fruit of the Holy Spirit. There are nine listed in the Bible. Love. Joy. Joy. Peace. Peace. peace patience. Patience. Kindness. Kindness. kindness faithfulness. Gentleness and self-control. Wow. Against Lots such things there is no law. Those belong to Christ Jesus. <laughs> 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 Okay, well, there you go. Good man. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against these things there are no law. So, a Christian, through the process of sanctification, will be growing in these nine fruits, day by day, day, year by year, going from one degree of glory, it says in Romans, I believe, to another. We're growing. We'll be getting more and more like Jesus. And these fruits are essentially our description of our friend, our great God and saviour, the mediator, Jesus Christ. It says this. Again, love. Think about Jesus. Love. <coughs> Jesus was full of love. He was full of joy. He was full of peace. He was full of patience. I love that one. I love that one. Full of kindness. He still is today. All these things, he still is today. Same mistake today forever. Patience. Kind, goodness. Jesus is full of faithfulness. Gentleness. And he's controlled. He's not erratic. So you will, through the process of sanctification, be growing in the gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is the one that sanctifies us with the word. And to be sure, as long as you're, I would say, attending church, coming to small group, just being committed, being honest in the groups, repenting of sin, you'll be growing in these wonderful fruit of the Holy Spirit. So what's the big idea? What's the, again, what's, what's the big idea? What am I trying to communicate here? What I've outlined thus far is how God, the Holy Spirit, relates to us today. But it was not so before Jesus came. Jesus is so important that the whole world's timekeeping is, revolves essentially around him. B.C., before Christ, A.D., Anno Domini, the year of our Lord, is what it means. Jesus Christ came. He splits the whole thing. What the Bible calls this is NT, excuse me, OT and NT, Old Testament and New Testament. The Old Testament is the old way that Jesus used to relate to his people, that God used to relate to his people. The New Testament is the new way that God relates to his people. But in the Old Testament, they didn't have the experience of the Holy Spirit like we do now. So just now, as so now you can enjoy the presence of God by the Holy Spirit, the presence of Jesus by the Holy Spirit, anywhere, anywhere in the world, on the bus or the plane, in your room, on the street, wherever you can experience the presence of the Holy Spirit. But before that wasn't the case. The Holy Spirit will come upon certain people for specific tasks, for specific pur purposes, for a specific season. You have to be special. And if the commoner, like you and me, wanted to go and experience the presence of God, they'll go into what we, what 